In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's number one ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We talk about our lives, our kids, fun stuff. Listen to the episode from beginning to end for the most fun. But if you want to fast forward to your favorite part, go to mindpumppodcast.com where everything is timestamped. So let me give you a rundown. We open up by talking about how I'm nesting. I got a baby coming, so I started to get that instinctual nesting mm. feeling happening. Then I'm talking it about happens, so. my son who inherited my smart ass genetics, and now I'm paying the price. Hmm. Then we talked about Ned's new CBD, CBN product that puts you to sleep. The stuff is powerful, ladies and gentlemen. I don't recommend you taking it before you operate heavy machinery. Mm. It does make you sleepy and you sleep hard. By the way, Ned is a company we work with, and you get a discount if because you listen to Mind Pump. So do this. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump. Get 15% off everything, including their sleep formula, the Ned sleep formula. Then Justin brought up South Park's episode where they talked about the pandemic. I can't wait to watch that. Yeah, pretty funny. Then we talked about how President Trump got COVID, and that makes all of our conspiracy cackles tingle a little bit. What the hell's going on here? What's happening? Then we talked about another one of our partners, ButcherBox, giving away lobster and filet mignon. I'm not making this up. If you sign up right now at ButcherBox, you can get hooked up with lobster and filet mignon only if you use the Mind Pump hookup. Here's what you do. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, um, and then you get the mind pump hookup. You get two lobster tails and two filet mignons for free. By the way, ButcherBox delivers grass-fed, high-quality meats to your door for amazing prices. It's fine dining this Friday. Go check it out. Then I talked about a study that showed that narcissists get more involved in politics. Uh, oh, what does that say about me? Yeah. Then we talked about, uh, I got a DM from a bikini competitor whose coach told her to take some dangerous stuff as per usual. These coaches are jerks, I swear. Mm. Then we talk about Adam Water Sports. What are we talking about? I don't know. Listen to the episode. <laughs> then we got into the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know, what are some of the best ab exercises that help me feel my abs or connect to my abs? The next question, this person wants to know what we think about primal movements and animal flow. The third question, this person wants to know what, it's, what, it's, what you should do to always feel like you're on. Um, and the final question, this person wants to know how we partnered up and why we didn't choose to go solo. Also, uh, this month, we want to give back to our community. So here's what we did. We took our number one and number two most popular workout programs, MAPS Anabolic and the No BS Six Pack Formula, which is a core training program. We took both of them. We smashed them together. We bundled them together. Here's your price, $59.95 for lifetime access to both. That is insane. That's less than you would pay. That's half of what you would pay for MAPS Anabolic alone, but with the no BS six-pack workout included for free. Again, $59.95, pay one time, lifetime access to MAPS Anabolic, our most popular muscle-building, metabolism-boosting program that we have. And you get the No BS six-pack formula, which is designed to help you build your abs so that your six-pack is more visible even at higher body fat percentages. If you want to take advantage of this incredible discounted uh, deal, go to mapsoctober.com. That's M-A-P-S-October.com. And it's T-shirt time. Oh, shit, dog. It's my favorite time of the week. Yep, no! yep. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> <laughs> Try to cut in my time there. I was. <laughs> He's trying to throw in my last little line. Yeah. Doug jumped it. It's his favorite time, dude. Yeah. Sorry. So we have two winners for Apple Podcasts, four winners for Facebook. The Apple Podcast winners are Megan McCown and Josh Ibar. For Facebook, we have Steve Matson, Jonathan Garcia, Ashley Ponce, and Stephen Griffin. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you.
What did you say, Adam? Yes. How was I? How was I doing? Third yeah. trimester. Yeah. Yes. What, what yeah, happens yeah. in the third trimester? <laughs> you just stay home as a man and get criticized all day. <laughs> 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 it's like sport, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a so, yeah, what, No, you know what I'm. What you know? am I not doing right today? Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I know I just woke up, but tell uh, me. I just got <laughs> here. I messed up something. Yeah. No, you know what? It's funny. I'm nesting myself. Did you experience that towards the end? Yeah, Were, yeah, were yeah. you too? You started feeling like yeah, you were, yeah. I devil. I took on. <laughs> Wow. I took on some of the, uh, the the traits they say right. So I had I even had um, some of the the first trimester. I had some of the like nausea and stuff. But I think it. And Wait, you got nauseous? Yeah, I did. So uh, she was getting too much attention, yeah. or what? No, <laughs> this is this is what I what I attribu- what I attribute it to, right? I mean, obviously, some people think that it's like, oh, some men carry the trait. I think what it was was. That first trimester when you're waiting for like, and I forget what week it is where they do the like the test that lets you know like he's gonna be healthy, oh, like yeah. and yeah. like that. T- so you know, right? As a father, you learn right away as soon as she takes the test. It's like you know week four that you guys are pregnant, but you don't tell anybody till week twelve. So those first two months or so, I was nauseous, you're sweating it. Oh, I was, yeah, and yeah. even though I was like playing it off like I I wasn't because I wasn't thinking about it, I wasn't talking yeah. about it to anybody inside. I I was uneasy all the time, and I couldn't. I wasn't sick. I was like, why am I not? I'm not sick, but I'm just my stomach has not felt right yeah. for like two months. So. No, we, we're we're now we had our yeah. our. Um, I got fat, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I packed some weight. <laughs> just, 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 Justin's just, all finally. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, you're getting fat. I'm getting fat. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's do. It. I'm working out more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> preparing. Yeah. No, you know what? Uh, the we had our uh, now the midwife is coming every week, right? Because we're at we're like heading into you know game time. Yeah, and they brought the tub. So now we have the big inflatable tub where she could finish the labor or whatever. Mm. You got to hook up a hose to your your shower to mm. fill it up, and you got to have drop cloth. They're like, make sure you have a drop cloth for the bed, for the floor. Make so does sh- that like? Do you keep it inflated now, or is it like uh, they just show you how you inflate it when it starts happening? They said me give it to me, so it's up to me. So uh, when she starts going into you know you should, throw, you should blow oh, it up man. right now and like use I know, it like I a little like, in the living room jacuzzi. That's yeah. a, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> <laughs> just chill. Yeah, just chill. I like that's going to happen in here later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they give they they're like okay, we need uh, eight towels that you don't mind throwing away. You know, we need uh, plastic bags sure. for garbage. We need drop cloths on Sounds everything. like you're murdering somebody. Dude, yeah, it does. I'm like, this <laughs> like is Dexter. What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Some visqueen. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. So we're, you know, doing that whole setup. And then and all of a sudden I got this urge to like change the AC, you know, all the air filters in the house and fix the part of the floor that's not, hasn't been fixed forever. And Jessica's like, are you nesting? Look at you. <laughs> I'm oh, like, wow. I guess I am a little bit. Yeah. Went to Home yeah. Depot like four times this got, weekend. Got a couple well, fake flowers. I thought you were like me. You didn't know how to do any of that stuff. I, it's, uh, I don't. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so, but it's basic stuff. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm so bad. I'm so bad with that, dude. I felt like Katrina knows though. She knows how to get me, right? It's her way of getting me is like, could she'll, you? She'll tell me like that. Like this happened last night, right? Literally. So it's funny. Can you I'm find like, a man to do this for me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> I'm. You call Justin? I am this bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm this bad, right? So um, this is me like admitting, okay, I'm terrible at this, right? And uh, we uh, like a light bulb went off in the closet like last week, you know. And we have a, we have the light bulb down there, and I just I'm I'm so not the handy guy that I just don't do it. It's not that I can't change the light bulb, you know. And so last night she's like, we get done bathing Max or whatever. She's like, could you uh could you bathe Max tonight so I can go change the light bulb in the closet? And I'm like, and you're oh, like wait, a minute. yeah, okay, yeah. All all right. Right. All right, now you're challenging yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I like. Hold on, yeah. you know, I was like, where? Because I don't know where the light bulbs are at. She's like, oh, they're down in the closet. Uh, in the you never the, you never throw it back at her. Yeah, no, I, I was gonna change it yesterday when I was cooking dinner, but uh, you <laughs> yeah. know, you see, it doesn't work for a guy, does it? <laughs> no, we just sound like assholes. Yeah, yeah, so I just I get up and go do it right away. But, yeah, uh, I gotta get better at that. Dude, speaking of kids, like you know, the, the, your your kids definitely inherit your traits, good and bad. Mm. And so as a kid, um, the thing that I would always get in trouble for the most was being a smart ass. Mm. I was always a very, you know, I was a smart ass. Who cool. you? Now you're starting about, to see it a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, huh? dude. Okay. Oh yeah, I was terrible. Right? That's my my grandmother. I, I don't know how many times she threw the wooden spoon at me for talking back <laughs> and being a, a smart ass or whatever. I remember one time a great grandmother was chasing me around the table as I was talking back to her. Yeah. But anyway, so my son has inherited this trait that mm. I have, 
So, you know, we had on this group thread with, with Jessica, and I don't remember what she asked him. She asked him something. Yeah. And he didn't respond, didn't respond, didn't respond. Finally, he responds like a day later. and Snarky. She, well, no, she had sent him like this long text asking him if he wanted to have a friend over and make sure you let me know. Maybe we can have them have dinner, whatever. And his response was K, like just the letter K. K. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, just K, right? So... <laughs> I message on the side, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, can you show a little bit more respect to your stepmom? He's like, you know, of course. W- what do you mean? I answered the question. I'm like, yeah, but that's not respectful. So I'm like going back and forth with him. So then I, five minutes later, this is the text that comes through. For Jessica? For, for In the group, right? Yeah. This is what he sends. Stepmother dearest, it seems that I have <laughs> offended you by partaking in electronic messaging this evening. To answer your question, your word, Adam. <laughs> to answer your question, why, of course, I would love to participate in recreational activities with a friend in a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> may, may I retract my statement from earlier as father has deemed it disrespectful. I hope you have a blessed father evening. Father unit. And thank you for reaching out to me. This fucking uh, kid, dude. Uh, <laughs> this he's kid. sharp, man. Oh, dude. This kid, dude. You gotta, so, you gotta respect the wit. Yeah, and she's, you know, Jessica's got a good sense of humor, so she laughed and whatever. She knew she ran oh, away. Oh, good. She she, okay, good. Uh, she yeah. laughed about it because yeah. I was, I was wondering how she handled that. Like, if yeah. she got all upset. She texted that. me right after. She's like, yeah. "You talked to him, didn't you?" I'm like, "Yeah." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a jerk. Dude. And as a dad, you can't get mad, can you? Like when it's yeah. so. I, I, obviously, I haven't experienced this yet because Max is so young, but I. You know, hear this story. You this happened to you, right? I'm going like, man, how would I handle that? Would I get really upset, or would I just like, ins- or would I put on a front like I'm upset, but deep down I'm laughing inside, going like, oh my god, that's so me. I well, mean, what is that your, the feeling or what? Yeah. Kinda like, well, part of me is up, it gets annoyed, and then part of me thinks it's it, it's funny. But w- when you were a kid, like, were, were the things that you got like in trouble for a lot that you? Like, what kind of traits do you think your son's going to... Well, I mean, <clears throat> like you, I was like that, right? So I was very outspoken. So if I didn't like something... Uh, but I, obviously, I, I could not articulate myself as well as your son did. I mean, that would, <laughs> that's why I think that's so comical to me. It's like, <laughs> it was so well put. Uh, but I definitely... I had the talk back trait, for sure. So I'm, I'm ready for that when it comes. So I'm, it's inevitable that's coming. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Like, I, you know what? I I bet you don't realize it until it hits you, right? Like, I remember Justin shared a sh- story one time. Him and I were talking, and he was telling me that he's got the little bulldozer. Kid. Well, no, he was telling me yeah. like he has like these things that he does, you know, to get his way with like Courtney, right? That he's learned to like kind of like you know get what he wants. And he said that that was like a major moment when he saw his boy using it on on same her. Same tactics. Yeah, same tactics. Yeah. He's like, well, "You, that's my move." You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? How dare you steal my move? <laughs> that's my move to get my way. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really know what it is until it probably starts to happen to me. And then when it does, like you know that like Justin told me that story. You've you shared this one, like. You know, do you get mad as a dad or do you like chalk it up uh, to the game? You know, I had like, one of those this weekend. It was pretty funny because um, we were like having an intense conversation and like there was a financial thing happening. We're trying to discuss like me and Courtney and it was getting a li- it wasn't like we were fighting, but we were just having like a, you know, a real like serious conversation. And, you know, Everett always finds that as an opportunity to come and just like become a jackass like right in front of us and do something crazy he put like a kleenex box on his head and like took his clothes off and was like doing these like weird dances <laughs> while we're like in a serious conversation and it was just like so diffusing you know mm. we're just like ah he does that every time like it, if something's happening on the phone especially to get like attention and it's it, i mean it's hilarious but at the same time you're like not now i yeah. wonder if he i wonder if he senses like the, the tension yeah the tension totally. and, the, totally, yeah. and that's his way of diffusing it is like he defaults to doing something yeah. well he's right? really good at it they say this about the old uh oldest in a family that they feel um somewhat responsible for keeping the house peace right whatever so sometimes you'll see that with the oldest where they'll come and try and diffuse a situation by being funny or, yeah. or something like that so that's a common thing yeah it was great he's Th- a pretty sensitive kid too like you can tell he reads people's uh, emotions very very well he's like a very advanced when you oh, talk ethan? to him yeah, yeah yes yeah, yeah, yeah. ethan does for yeah, sure. yeah 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 it was funny so this this whole weekend we were uh 
my youngest is really getting into science and stuff from school, which is great. And I'm like, you know, any opportunity where they ask you, like, can I learn more about this? That's like not like school driven. I'm like, oh, I'm all into this. So we went downtown to, to Santa Cruz and try, I was trying to find something that was like somewhat related to physics because he's just like he heard me talking about it a little bit. And then he's like, I want to know more. And so we went and got this like uh, this the science experiment thing where it was like basically you put together uh, this crane that was all driven by hydraulics. And so we're like putting it all together. And it, of course, like Courtney's laughing because she knows like what's going to happen with me in terms of putting it together and then him trying to like play with it while I'm putting it together. And it was like a, a disaster, you know, but I finally got it put together and everything. And uh, we're, we're just like trying to move these things and it's breaking like every two seconds because it's made out of plastic. But uh, yeah, I, I made this like vow to myself, like anytime they like want to learn something, like, I'm going to go, yes. you know, pay for it or we're going to go do it together or whatever. So there's been that. And like he's really like into these crazy experiments that uh, I look up on YouTube all the time. Well, dude, now. a kid, a kid will learn nothing faster than something that they want to learn. Yeah. So you have to like jump on it. Yeah. I was just like pounced on it. Yeah. We uh, this uh, this weekend we had a little mini sex talk with my daughter oh. she's in fifth grade now right oh. so this is when wow. they that, your daughter that's so weird to picture her that's, but that's you're right news. fifth grade is when you go through that but she's can they teach him that already yeah, yeah but it's not you know how it is in fifth grade they yeah, teach you like the real... sperm the egg the whole deal but i was very open with my son so i sat down with my son when he's in fifth grade and i when i was a kid girl shit still like this with my parents when i was a kid it was you didn't talk about it at all there was no mention of sex there was no mention of body parts there was nothing so I didn't want that for my kids. I wanted it to be very open and to not make it a big deal, you know, and be a, you know also be appropriate, but not right. to make a big deal. But my daughter is so much more naive than my son was, like way more. Part of you is like, yes. Yeah. Well, but, and part of me is yeah. like, how am I? This is that I need to talk to her about this, and this is going to be weird <sighs> yeah, to talk to awkward. her. Yeah. Yeah. So we're having kind of this conversation, and my son goes, you know, we talked about puberty. I'm like, well, you know, here's what happens to boys. Here's what happens to girls. You know, and they get their period and this and that. So we're kind of explaining that. And you can see the look on her face. She's like, huh? And then my son goes, do you know how babies are made? So I'm like, I want to like elbow my son up the chair, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so he's like, you know, he's trying to push it, right? Do you know how they, they're made? And my daughter's like, well, yeah, like, you know, two people, they pray. And then, you know, God. They, they pray? Yeah. Oh, God so gives great. them a baby that's inside so the man. thing. And he starts chuckling. He goes, no, not really. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Shh." laughs> yeah, dude. And I'm like, I'm going to push this kid. Because I want her to ask. I don't want him to probe. Right, right, you right. You know what I mean? Of course. So we're just, and she's, you could tell we'll go to a point and then it gets a little too far. She'll be like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. We don't have to talk about yeah, it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, the thing I'm dealing with her right now is that she's moody. <laughs> Man, she gets moody, especially if she doesn't get good sleep. She wakes up, she's pissed mm. for like an hour. She's just angry. Yeah. And, you know, my, my instinct is to push back and be like, you better change. Now I'll just be like, everybody, I'll tell, I'll text the whole everybody but her. Like, hey, everybody, ignore her for the rest until she cools <laughs> off because it doesn't work. She didn't get eight hours. Yeah. yeah totally. Otherwise, she's going to be pissed. She just gets mad for longer. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Anyway, speaking of sleep. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait to talk. I've been waiting to talk about this. I was just telling you guys earlier, man, I, I went through a string of three days. And then even last night, I, I finally took that, that, that product Ned has out for sleep. Dude. And it just... I don't know what it is because I remember you guys telling too, like if you take it a little bit early, like it makes you a little bit drowsy. It didn't make me drowsy, so I was a little worried. But, dude, I was out like a light. No, so so Ned came out with a sleep product. So it's got <clears throat> CBD in there, but also it's high in CBN, which is a cannabinoid that uh, helps with sleep. And then they put other things in there like valerian and chamomile and other compounds that help. I took it. I've tried it now like four or five times. I have too. About an hour later, if I don't go to bed, I start to feel like, whoa. It's next level. Bro. Yeah. It'll it'll put you out. All five times. I've done it five I times so far. I think it's so the best product they've come up with. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. It makes you sleep hard yeah. and dream hard. Do you yeah. have crazy ass dreams? Crazy dreams. Yeah. I'm like in <laughs> real deep sleep. I I feel like I'm probably snoring like like a buzzsaw. Oh, and jealous, Jessica's so jealous because she's just, she's just not sleeping right now. She can't sleep. So that midwife told her to sleep on her side or uh, like propped up, kind of like like hands and knees almost. What do you feel about her using this? No, I wouldn't. You know, here's the deal with cannabinoids. I know that, they, that some people say, you know, give it to pregnant women. I don't because 
cannabinoids affect it could affect brain development and i don't mm. like to risk yeah any potential you know what yeah, i mean yeah so there's not a lot of no there's upside there's that. not a lot of research around it I, I was looking when katrina was pregnant i couldn't find anything and we did we did the same thing we didn't risk taking it but i bet it would have been fine yeah i would just err on, on the side of uh, of safety all right that's how i feel yeah. too it's like you know rather tough it out whatever it is what it is like we're gonna get through this and versus risking something like that but i still don't i don't think there'd but be that either. product dude it knocks me out like yeah. to the point where i'm like should yeah. i use this like less frequently because i, I don't know. want it to lose its potency it's impressive and it ha i mean i hate to compare it to like nyquil but like you don't have those effects like when you wake up like a like, super super drought from like one of those like no nyquil type products like yeah you don't have that at all no you wake it's up and you, you you dreamed hard you slept hard and you wake up uh, refreshed right cbn is going to be a big uh cannabinoid product uh, for a lot of companies no you i mean you, sure it was pretty interesting uh I, I mean if you've been listening for a long time they maybe they were people remember but you called this like over over a year or two ago yeah. when we were first talking about it and the research that was coming out in cbn i remember you talking about this was before they even had you know, even ideas of this product so and I can tell a major difference. I can tell a difference between that and then the full spectrum. Just mm -hmm. the full spectrum by itself helps, uh, and I I like it. I use it, but it's this thing puts me down. Like yeah. If I want to sleep, I'm using that. Absolutely. If you're on a plane or something like that, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So have you guys uh, seen the South Park episode yet? No. I, oh, I want to hear about it. Wait, no, Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. Oh, thing, I wanted to dude. watch it with you guys. Yeah. No, it's it's really good. I mean, it's it's not like super hilarious or anything i think it's like really intelligent and clever the way they like strung it all together to kind of poke at both sides and poke at like everything that's happening in general you know and it was really clever because like so one of the things is basically like so they they have lost all these teachers because they don't want to come back uh they basically reopened the school and so all the kids are you know have to go back to school of course to cartman's like chagrin like he loves the fact that he doesn't have to hang out with anybody and can mm -hmm. eat whatever he wants. and like he puts you know skype on and he puts like a picture of him so it looks like he's on skype for you know <laughs> school, school. Yeah. and so i was like oh so that's clever and he's got his six foot stick he's poking everybody and getting back from him and stuff <laughs> i was like oh it's hilarious and uh so basically they go back to school and everything and the, the teachers strike and they're not they don't want to go back to school and then so what they do is they hire like all of the Agreed. defunded police <laughs> <laughs> so the defunded police become their their <laughs> teachers and then they harass them and it's like oh damn it i wanted to watch so, this with you guys I bro it, it, it's very clever it's very clever dude speaking of covid dude justin uh, tell yeah. me that your conspiracy cackles weren't freaking tingling like crazy i know well, when, when trump comes out and has covid it just it's, it was so bizarre right like the timing got that yeah crazy yeah, like you guys right are after silly. That? I don't think it's that. I bro, don't. It, I don't think it's that crazy, bro. The timing know, is man. wild. The so, dude is flying around all over the world, bro. Yeah, what? but he's the most it's, protected. Does not matter in the, the world? Yeah, but it's a virus. You can't see it. It's in the air, dude. You can't see that. It's not like protecting you from yeah, an assassin. Yeah, somebody sneezes. You know, it's not just in the air. Like you have to have droplets to like shoot out. I so. don't know, dude. All I know all is all the plane rides. I, all all the, I know is all the fans. He's. I mean, come on, dude. I, I know, but it's not a secret like virus. Like everybody's looking out for it. Everybody's yeah. getting yeah, tested. Yeah, but you can't like see it. Though. It's, but you can make you can make weird conspiracies on both sides, right? Totally. Like it, it could yeah. it could like help his cause. It could you know be somebody attacking him. Like who knows? It is interesting to see both sides figure out how to spin this right. to their advantage. Yes, because it's hard to attack them negatively because then you kind of look like a jerk. Right? Yeah. Hey, what, what's up, dude? It's October. I thought we we're gonna get a big surprise. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you this think is this, this is part. Is of this it? a surprise? Oh, this is whack. On? That's not a good surprise. <laughs> well, <laughs> what surprised me is I guess he got good reviews from his debate which was like i thought his he approval totally rate, did terrible his approval rating went up a little bit is and that then, true is that just fox telling you no that? no no that's true really yeah and then uh was it telemundo did a a, a, a poll latino voters 66 percent thought he won i don't know if they watched the same debate i saw i know right because it wasn't that it wasn't great for anybody nobody yeah. was looking good no oh, nobody looked terrible. good but i thought he looked worse i thought for sure he, i mean i had it at five to two like i yeah. had five biden to him yeah. like and his two were like gifts yeah. i felt like yeah he got it just because he got a zinger is in uh, joe jorgensen's uh is this her site back up oh uh, yeah it's back up yeah. but it crashed right after isn't that right? great yeah oh, i love that because people oh, I even like, went over they're like what else can i do yeah who else is there yeah somebody anybody Else. Vote for some, but did you see the treatments that they that they put them on? So besides the, there's some experimental antivirals they have them on, and some uh, antibody treatments. They're also having them take zinc and vitamin D, 
So vitamin D, now we have some pretty good evidence to show that if it's uh, high, your the, your the chances that you'll get severe symptoms are far lower mm. from COVID. Zinc, there's also a lot of evidence. Melatonin, did you guys see that? Melatonin? Oh, wow. Yes. So apparently melatonin at high doses uh, can really reduce the inflammatory response from respiratory type diseases. So they have mm. them on that as well. Mm. So melatonin, zinc, vitamin D. And then the other stuff. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that is you know? interesting. Yeah, melatonin yeah. seems like well, a left field for me for that. It's yeah. it's antioxidant and it has anti-inflammatory properties. But I think you have to take high doses, like twenty. So what, is he drowsy all day or what? <laughs> At night. Yeah. No, nobody was talking about any preventative methods. It it feels like it's like it it's blasphemy or something. Like it's politicized to talk about like preventative methods. Yeah, I know, but he's dude. He's not. I mean, technically, he's in a bad category, right? He's seventy four. He's not exactly uh, ideal weight. I think he's no. 244 pounds, something like that. So he's not exactly in the best category. Yeah, for he's this. husky. But there, I don't know. I don't no, know. he's in the worst, isn't he? Yeah. Is no, it, he's not in a good category. How old, at all. How old is he? 74. How does he have so much energy? Yeah, he's in the worst. He's out of shape in 74. Is, he's like, he has the worst. The, the, uh, which, by the way, if he comes out like a champion, you know he's going to spin the shit out of that. Of course. Both you know? sides are trying to he's spin come, He's going to come out beating his chest, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest of all time. Yeah, yeah. So he says he's 6'3", 243. Boy, he's a big boy. He's a he's yeah. a he's a chunkster. He's a big he's, just, <laughs> he's, a ch- he's just a big boy all the time. dude. You're I mean, that's not crazy. Two forty at six three is not that big. Well, because he's six yeah, three. Yeah, yeah bro. It's, yeah. I, I mean, didn't realize he was that easy tall. guy. I'm, I'm like two twenty five. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that far off. Bro, him. you add another twenty pounds on you, yeah. take yeah, away yeah. some of your muscle. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're and you're right. you're but cake still. cake city. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what's going on? Yeah, anyway, sure. speaking of our sponsors, do you guys see the giveaway that Butcher Box is doing? Yes, oh, what bro. The, lobster, lobster, lobster tails. Dude, you get lobster. And, and you would you up? say filet mignons? What, what's happening? <laughs> mignons. Yeah, yeah mignons. Yeah. Filet mignons. Dude, how are they giving We're away? We're getting classy all of a sudden. How the hell are they giving away lobster tail? Dude, I love. You know I what? think because they, they crushed in the pandemic. That's why. You think so? Oh, bro, I mean, remember they shut they, they shut down advertising. We had to pause advertising because so many people. We're ordering from them. Yeah, why wouldn't you? You just get it conveniently delivered to you instead of going to the apocalypse. Yeah, well, lobster's good because shellfish in general um, are, for, for, for muscle building purposes, they're high in key nutrients that are good for testosterone, like zinc. And they're also very high in cholesterol, which I've talked about, I don't know, a trillion times on the podcast. Dietary cholesterol, if you bump that up, if you're healthy and you increase your cholesterol intake, you will notice strength gains and faster recovery. Yeah. And shellfish is a great way to, to get yeah, that. A little surf and turf, man. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. No, that's an awesome game. Yeah, I, 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 I love it. I love it. Anyway, um, I saw this interesting study about, uh, about narcissists. Did you guys know? So they've connected. You, why the fuck did you point at me when you said that? Huh? <laughs> did you see him just do that? Just a little finger. Yeah, oh, you know right, he did. Well, I know. I did on... this interesting study about narcissism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're pay on. Attention, Adam. We're on YouTube now. I like to point to things I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So the people watching YouTube, <laughs> YouTube land, yeah. narcissist. No, they showed that uh, narcissists are more likely to participate in political rallies and protests. Oh, and, really? Yeah. So people, I, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? You feel like you're more you're virtuous, important than mm. you know whatever. So you're uh, gonna go out and speak out and do a bunch of things, right? So it's a nice little thing. You a little, want to command your views. Yeah, it's a nice little, little insult you can use to somebody. Yeah, you see them yeah. <laughs> out with a sign. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're a narcissist. Yeah, but which I remember when we did that one thing with your, your you had to, the psychologist that came on here and did that. There's there's good narcissism and there's bad narcissism. There is right. So there it's is. like which one is that one that makes you go out and and uh, and you know go out and protest. Mm. Test. Yeah. Well, you, if you're going to do anything that you think is going to have a big impact, you probably think high, more highly of yourself than not, right? If right. you're going to start a business, you know, people who don't really think highly of themselves don't put themselves out there, I would think. Mm-hmm. So narcissism is associated with, you know, with, with some of yeah, that, that stuff. That makes sense. Dude, I got a DM uh, yesterday. It really makes me so angry. You know, I, I've, we've moved away from that competitor space of the fitness space for a while now. And, you know, for newer listeners who don't know, you know, Adam was a professional <laughs> physique competitor um and uh, you know so we yeah. were in that space a little bit more we when used we to first talk started. about like drama between competitors and their girlfriends and i'm like what the hell are we doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody gives a shit about this <laughs> <laughs> just, that was right just <laughs> yeah. but that dude that space is such a bad uh side of fitness it makes me so angry i i, I got a dm from a young lady she can't be any older than 23 years old she's got to be in her early 20s and she sends me a DM and she goes, hey, my bikini coach 
is recommending that I take uh, Osterin. Um, what do you think about this? Osterin is a uh, is a SARM, a selective androgen receptor module. It's a, it's a drug that attaches to the androgen receptor, similar to how testosterone would. Um, and he's recommending it to this young girl to get her to compete. So I looked up looked wow. up the coach. He's got a huge following. He's this dirtbag bikini competitor coach, and he's give, putting these girls on, you know, like a lot of male them do, hormone type a, shit. A lot of them do, bro. It's so. I I messaged her. I said, all right. I said, first off, this acts on your androgen receptors. Wow. Could mess up your hormones for life. Could affect your fertility. You need to tell them to fuck off. It's not worth a trophy for you to do this. Yeah, plastic one that no one gives a shit of. Oh, I, it makes yeah. me so mad that they that they do these, and I think that you know the 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 women get worse than the they get the worse. Worse off than the men because all these, so many of these chemicals and hormones are male derived hormones. Yeah. So, you know, you give a guy. Irreversible. A, yeah. You give a guy extra testosterone, he gets some side effects, but you give a girl extra testosterone or testosterone like substances, and you're going to get way worse. It's a yeah. sex, essentially sex change. I've heard, uh, yeah, I've heard this just, uh, you know, winds of, of people talking about this with a lot of the bikini uh, competitors. And they're like, what is this? With, between that and like Anavar, I've heard of, and like some other, uh, yeah, some testosterone like uh, type anabolics. And it's just like, why? Why would you, why well, would you even need to include the that? The worst part is too, then they put them on like a 16 week prep. Dude, oh, and, and where they just hammer their, their metabolism. Yeah, cardio every day, like sometimes twice a day. And then you're, and then you're adding drugs on top of that it's starve like, them like what the fuck are you thinking yeah. and dude? What, it makes me mad because they're young competitors and it's some you know it's some dirtbag 40 year old you know uh coach who makes his money doing this and they put their trust in this coach and so they're like should I, what do you you know is this going to yeah. be safe yeah yeah i, I put, do this with everybody yeah oh yeah i put look at here's the champions that i've you know she won you know you know regional you know second place by me putting her on this and yeah. you know it'll make you so lean and you'll be so strong and you'll love it and you know they're influ- you know they're influencing these these girls doing not realizing that they're going to m- potentially mess themselves up yeah you know in the future it makes me so angry so i told her i said yeah tell them to f, f- off <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. i almost wanted to message him but i'm not going to go that far well yeah don't do that yeah, that, there's that, no reason to do that there's yeah. it's a lot it's it's uh it's more common than not i know it's it's rare that i actually meet a coach in that space who uh, i think does it the right way with a lot of these competitors where you know that's the last resort is to allow them to do drugs. I mean, at the end of the day, you're an in, you're 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 an individual. You can do whatever you want to do. You're, you know, like if you want to put something in your body, and I try, I tell you the risk, and you still want to do it. I can't tell you no. You know, I can't tell you can't. But I, I'm going to try and convince you to do it as natural as possible for as long as you can possible. Especially if this is not something that you think is going to be a lifelong career, like all oh, right, I'm not judging a, a guy who decides that you know 20 something years old he's going to get into the bodybuilding world and that's all he's ever dreamed of and that's what he wants to do for the rest of his life and he just aspires to be the biggest human on earth. Like okay, to each their own. But I mean, if you're doing this because and what I would what I found during this time right now in the last like decade, it's become so popular to you know, get a Instagram following from, uh, you know, winning a show mm-hmm. and, in you know, posting your physique that so many of the, this younger generation coming up thinks that this is just the model of like yeah. how you make money. And you can monetize that. Yeah. But haven't they been cracking down quite a bit on that in, in terms of like how they – uh, how they uh, portray it and how they advertise uh, these products as an influencer. A, a little bit, but, you know, there's still that allure, yeah. you know. I think what, what women need to be told, I think what needs to be communicated more to women is that the risks associated with extreme dieting, overtraining, in combination with these types of drugs, are actually far higher for women than they are for men. It's still a risk for men. But for women, you uh, first off, your fertility can get affected very, very badly, much more so than a man. Getting that lean alone, just even if you did it naturally, getting shredded affects a female's uh, body worse than a man's, uh, a male's body. And then putting them on these hormones or hormone-like substances, it's really like me putting a man on estrogen or estrogen-like substances. It's really no different, but they're putting women on the opposite, so it's like, you know, if, if you're a woman, you go to the doctor and you get a sex change, it's kind of what they do. Mm-hmm. They put you on these types of drugs and you're doing it maybe to a less degree to look better on stage. But you, you, you start to affect yourself in ways that 
might not be reversible, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in the future. It really uh, annoys the hell out of me. Yeah. Hey, a Adam, I wanted to uh, comment on you made a, you put a video on your Instagram. Oh yeah, uh, thank you for bringing this up, dude. <laughs> you're, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> Fuck off. Bro. I'm not. I'm serious. No, he went he went big on that one. I was uh, like, oh, what are you doing, dude? dude? You, dude you what know, is that waterboarding? Yeah, What's that called? It's wakeboarding. Wake <laughs> <water boarding. laughs> <laughs> that's the wrong kind of water. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, like, that's the new craze. Uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. torture. Yeah, uh, apparently, it's not like riding a bike. You do lose it, right? So uh, <laughs> it's not that. It's not as easy as I thought. Man, I I had it's been. Do you look good? Yeah. Well, thank you. I, 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 that Besides makes, the cool uh, face you were making, no, did you yeah. notice that? Yeah. As yeah. he's riding, he's like, except leave it to our forum to create a meme of that. Did you see that? Oh yeah, uh, no, uh, yeah. I see going around. The, guy, <laughs> the best comment was well, because he, he caught you in a pose where you're kind of doing this. Yeah. It, it, it was like, uh, this isn't the time to be dabbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was, no, I, I see going all over the place. One. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't ridden in a long time, right? So uh, I, I started, someone was asking me the other day that in my DMs after I posted that, right? Like, uh, where, how long I've been riding this night. So I've been riding since uh, we watched and learned on video cassette. So that's when we started, when we started wakeboarding. <clears throat> it wasn't even a thing yet. It was, uh, the boards looked totally different. They were incredibly hard to get up on and ride. And, my buddies and I were we were in junior high and we were hardcore into it um, and trying to learn and we so we'd watch video cassettes all the time and you know in high school I got pretty decent at it um, and then out of high school I rode you know almost every summer at least for a couple weeks out of the summer I would ride and then I got into my twenties and just you know it would be occasional every once in a while I'd get out for you know a little bit of ride and then you you saw the dip of like you know how much i was riding and like how long i would be ride for It'd be like one run okay i'm good and then mm. that's enough i could still yeah. do it you know <laughs> that was yeah. kind of the deal i can only take so many animals <clears throat> so i mean i you know i got i got uh you know i got katrina out there and my son out the there the number four yeah so four. i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. ride and more animals i uh i rode both days and boy i tell you what um i haven't felt like this in a long time where i literally feel like i wrestled a silverback gorilla and got my ass handed to me oh you're just sore everywhere i mean my, yeah. my toes like the middle of my toes hurt oh, my yeah, fingertips dude. hurt my biceps both feel like they've been torn off my neck is sore like i mean my core is unbelievably sore legs hamstrings i mean everything there's this like completely outside your normal <clears throat> activity it you know it was, action. it was very eye-opening though for me i told katrina i said it, it you know and i'm not the one when something like that happens it's not like i don't shy away with it and like you know oh let's hang it up i'm like oh my god i need this like if i if i had felt that sore i woke up that many muscles that i just have stopped using or that mm -hmm. have been dormant that I feel that sore that, oh my God, I need to be doing more. So yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, a, it was nice. It was a little frustrating for me though, because I, I could ride. Like I used to be pretty de decent at it. So it, yeah, but well, you look good. I watched the video. What part did you watch? Did you not watch the second part? <laughs> I right? did see you <laughs> try to jump. Hold on a second. You tried to jump and then you, he's not judging your landing. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you were cruising and you were doing, I mean, you look like you definitely look like it was something you've done a lot no. in the yeah. past. So is it left or right is is your favorite side? Because mine's always going to the left. So yeah, when you go when you cut, <laughs> there's that. Yeah. Oh wow. Thanks, Doug. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's some air though. Yeah. yeah, you got some air. Well, I, so I mean, the th that was like everybody in the boat was asking. They're like, why why are you doing such a big jump? Why don't you? I'm like, well, first of all, it's easier on the other side. So part of like uh, jumping on on a wakeboard is is to is to clear the wake on the other side of the wake. Yeah, it's like if you when you hit when it, you hit it, it's smooth oh, it's, on the way down. Oh, it's like it's butter like a ramp. But yeah. you if you hit a jump and you land in the middle of the wake, it's like landing on concrete. Yeah, and so it just you absorb all of it. It's harder to stick it and everything like that. So. Yeah, and riding on your edge on your heel side is much easier than toe side. But I mean, I've been riding long you enough to wake where skate, dude. yeah, I can. It's I can, a lot easier. Yeah. I, it is a lot. Easier. We had that, so you we had rode, that? yeah, oh, yeah, nice. we did, yeah, we did that, and we rode. But I mean, I wanted to. I mean, this is something I've been doing for a long time, so I wanted to see if I still had it in me, and obviously, I did not. I thought I. Could. So when you fall, because I've never done any of it. <clears throat> it doesn't hurt. That okay. doesn't. I was like, just gonna say everybody de like like oh my god, tell me on a scale of one to ten how or bad. Or just feel like well, you dive into a pool. Yeah, it's all how you depends look. on how hard you go, but yeah. It's like how you crash. Like so, I've so I've I've been knocked out wakeboarding. It's the only sport that has actually knocked me out. Um, and I was throwing what's called a tantrum, where you open up and do. A, a <laughs> you, you got real mad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, throw a fit, <laughs> right? It's like a true black backflip, right? So I can do a barrel roll. I have of me when I was younger, for certainly not now. 
uh, I hit the wake and I open, you open up and you do a true backflip where you op open all the way. And I was upside down completely, let go of the handle and then like pancaked on my back. Oh. And I'm like probably twice as high as I am in that, that photo that everyone is going around our fucking forum right now. Yeah. And <laughs> landed flat on the water like that with like uh, pancaked out on my back and my head. Yeah. And it, I just, I remember like the boat coming around to get me and that's like, I came to when they were already next to me. It takes a minute normally for the boat to come back. So I was out for like, I don't know, 30 seconds or whatever like that when I came to. So yeah, that it can hurt. It definitely can hurt. But crashing like that, it looks worse. Like I had one, I had weather falls uh, where I sent it even further than that. And I came completely out of the board. That's when you know it's a, like a good fall. Like when, <laughs> when you come out and the board is, you know, tw 20 yards away from you because you got launched out of the board. So that wasn't that bad. And you, Justin, you keep saying enemas. Is that what happens? You just hit your oh, ass. It's happened to me a few Oh, yeah. Times. No, you yeah. if you if the board slides out from underneath yeah, you. And, and your butt and your like ass hits goes, first. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes like right up there. Yeah. 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 Lake, I lost my shorts a yeah. few times. You get so. lake water up your butt? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you bro. Taste it in your throat. It cleans you out. Go fast enough. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, dude. Dude, that's not even the yeah. cleanest water. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Shout out to Ben Greenfield. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Disgusting. That was that was Max's first time. He was such a trooper, man. He was sick all week. And we had already had this trip planned, right? We had the, the boat rented. We had a house uh, set up on the lake. He looks tall right now. He's, he does. You know what's so does. funny? You got. I got to show you guys a picture of uh, when Katrina wears him in the uh, Bjorn. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he looks like he's fucking four. Yeah, because <laughs> he's just so long. He's. I mean, he's taller than his. So hit, we have my two best friends that are older than uh, that have kids that are older than him. And he's already uh, the height of the oldest one. He's mm -hmm. taller than he is. Yeah, he might be so, your basketball player after all. Uh, I hope all. so, right? So he's super long, but it looks so funny when Katrina walks him, walks with him in the Bjorn, because his legs hang all the way down like past her knees. So she looks like she's carrying like kicking a, her in the yeah, ribs. Yeah, some <laughs> some lazy four year old. Yeah, kid. like a lazy four year old kid. I'm like, you ever see parents that like push their kid in the stroller still and his legs can touch the ground? That was that dude. Yeah. Yeah. That was me when I was little. It's like, dude, make that fucking kid walk, dude. Yeah. That, that <laughs> was, Doing the Flintstone. Yeah. yeah. That was me. My my parents had to push me around. I don't want to walk. So my mom got a stroller and pushed me around. Yeah. We actually cut the trip short like though because he uh, he yeah. definitely. It's so funny, like, uh, I, so Katrina and I, I feel like, are very, like, sensitive to, like, people around us and, like, the energy in a room when you when we get a lot of different people. Like, we can always tell, like, ah, the vibes here is not right. Let's go. And so I tell her that anytime anything is off like that, he's, I feel like he's definitely the, the, the blend of the two of us. Like, he's ultra sensitive to that. Like, when there's tons of people in it or if, like, a couple is fighting or something going on. Like it throws him off completely. He is. It makes him in this awful, crabby, needy mood where all he wants is to be on me or to mm -hmm. be on Katrina, and he doesn't want to roam like he normally does. So he was like that, dude. And uh, I don't know if it was that or it was because he was coming off of being sick still, and he just, you know, we take him, drag him out to the lake, and you know, because you're out in the sun and well, all that, that well, and the that wind, would, <clears throat> right? Yeah. So I and I, but I that all good for him, right? I figured get him out in the sun would be good. And he was pretty good on the boat. I just think that he, being away from home and not feeling good, where I get that, right? I don't like to be away from my house when I don't when I don't feel good. So we actually bailed a day early and came came back and brought him back, and he was in like ten times. He's such him. a cute little boy. Oh. Yeah, you guys came by to pick up a, a couple things. You see him in the back. And he's a, he's a runny nose. And oh, stuff. he's such a cute yeah. little guy. I can't wait, man. Hey, so what's up with the? Let's like I noticed that they're putting uh, some of our apparel like five dollars, ten dollars. Yeah, so clearance. yeah, no, this is so we're getting ready to launch the new uh, apparel site. Super excited! The the Mind Pump merch site is getting ready to go live. Before it goes live, uh, Rachel wants to clear out like all the old inventory. So we have a lot of like shirts that we have like a, a medium left or one another the large. Left. So to get rid of all of it, I know she's pricing it like under ten dollars. So there's a huge blowout sale for all the apparel that we have left right now of the last season stuff. And then we're going to launch the, the the new site. So right now, go to mindpumpmedia.com, yeah. go under apparel, yep. and then you'll get the crazy Yeah, it should be right there. Gear. As soon as you click on the apparel, it should show the sale right there. So, yeah, no, hooking it up fat for everybody to kind of blow out uh, all the old inventory and then launch the new site. All right, our first question is from Jesse Jesus. What are some best ab exercises that will help with mind-to-muscle connection? 
I'm having trouble with my lower abs. What was the name of the YouTube video that we did, Sal? Hip flexor deactivator. Yes. The deactivator. Yeah. So, okay, so let me address first the whole lo lower ab thing. Um, your abdominal muscles have kind of two attachments. Um, the one attachment is at the pelvis. Another attachment is at the rib cage. And so when the abs contract, it's that whole, it's the whole abs. area. Yeah, there is no yeah. lower or upper abs. There is no other attachment. So I know a lot of people say, do this exercise for lower abs or this exercise for upper abs. It doesn't really work that way. The abs all contract uh, or they don't. And the two anchor points are at the bottom and the top, and that's it. But as far as connecting to the abs, this is actually quite important. In fact, more people have issues connecting their, to their ab muscles than don't. Uh, just feeling them burn doesn't mean you necessarily connect to them very well. There's a lot of muscles that can fold the body forward. So when you look at ab exercises in general, especially all the, the classic ab exercises, they involve folding your body forward. But you can also fold the body forward using your hip flexors, uh, for example. And those tend to be more active uh, in, in most people. The abs fold the body forward at the lumbar spine, not at the, at the hips. That's what will work the abs. So one of the things you want to do to help connect to your abs is understand the function of the abs. It literally rolls you forward at the lumbar spine, uh, at the lower part of your spine, not at the, at the hips. So if you do a leg raise, the raising of the legs isn't working your abs. It's the rotating of the pelvis that works the abs. If you do any kind of a sit-up, it's the rolling forward that, that works the abs. It's not the folding forward. Uh, necessarily that works the abs. So consider that first. But the most common reason why people don't feel the abs connecting is because the hip flexors are doing a lot of the work. And I did that video that Adam talked about called uh, that I called hip flexor deactivators. And essentially what you do in that, in that movement, and I'll walk you through it through the podcast, you lay on your back and you put your feet up on a bench or a physio ball with your knees bent, push down into the bench or the physio ball with your heels, lift your hips up off the floor just a little bit. And what you're doing is you're activating your glutes. You want to squeeze your glutes. Now, the reason why you want to activate your glutes is because when you activate one muscle, it helps to relax the opposing muscle. And the opposing muscles from the glutes are the hip flexors. So now that the glutes are active, the hip flexors are more likely to stay out of the exercise. And then you can practice slow crunches. And this will help you feel the abs rather than do movements with your crunches. Serene also did another video uh, with the with an assisted uh, perfect setup, which I love to teach. I think that's a, a great way to teach somebody to really activate their abs and, and slow it down. A lot of times um, when people struggle with feeling in their abs, it's like a speed thing, right? They're just using momentum and they're rocking their head and their neck and they're like Sal's and using so many other muscles to get them up, get the exercise up. And they feel a little bit in the abs because, uh, you know, maybe on it's the way. Stabilizing. Yeah, stabilizing or the way down, right? Uh, as you go back down on the floor, you feel them a little bit. And so you assume that you are working them, uh, but they can be worked so much better. <clears throat> and just by slowly rolling the spine up like in a perfect sit-up, yeah. articulating that. Uh, Is that perfect sit or McGill sit-up? Is it the same thing? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's called a. I don't know what a McGill setup is. Yeah, so it could be. It could be. Na I've I've seen different people call it uh, different titles. I know. I think uh, Serene titled it a uh, assisted perfect setup mm -hmm. uh, when she did the video. It's a really good video because you. It's already hard. I think most people are challenged to even do one. Sure. So using a band uh, to kind of like help assist you up, so you could really focus on the rolling of the spine. I think is a great exercise. And it's uh, yeah, it's educating too to see kind of where. When you start to articulate each one of those vertebrae, like where the sticking points are, where it's extra hard for you to get uh, some in that strength to kind of curl your body into that position. But yeah, to learn that process of being able to actually roll forward and, and use your abs, you know, in that direction is 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 eye opening when when you get it down. Oh, yeah. Uh, physio ball crunches are good at this. But, you know, here's the other thing with physio ball crunches. You can also make it so that you don't really work your abs very much at all. Oh, easily. Yeah. So if you get on a physio ball and it, Physio ball crunch is, by the way, one of my favorite ab exercises, if you do them properly. You put your lower back on the top of the ball, bend your legs, uh, and then put your feet on the floor, and then push your butt up. And while you're pushing your butt up, allow your lower back to wrap around the ball, so now you're kind of arching back, and then crunch over the ball while pushing your hips up. 
This will help anchor the hips and kind of get those hip flexors out of the movement and help you focus on the abs. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things I see people misusing it is they'll start dropping their hips down and letting their hips kind of move with and roll with the exercise. And they start just rocking, just rocking with back it. and forth. Next question is from Joey0089. What are your thoughts on primal movement or animal flow? Justin, didn't yeah. you go on a didn't you go on a kick on this for a little bit, or did, did. just all your guys inside your gym? Yeah, in, in my gym. I, I guess I was picking up on because they all went to the animal flow uh, certification and kind of brought back a lot of these movements. And I thought it was interesting. I thought it was like, how the hell am I going to incorporate this with clients? Because it's it's pretty out there in terms of getting people to uh, uh, subscribe to the idea of like crawling and moving in all these like weird directions. But I mean, I understand the concept of it in terms of like uh, applying um, positions that are challenging, whether in a static pose or, or now like with movement where, you know, I'm trying to, to connect everything. I'm trying to get more body awareness and be able to have more command over my body. And it's really challenging and it's hard. A lot of people don't like to stay in that position where you're in sort of a, a you know, quadruped uh, type position and then do these types of crawling patterns. It's really challenging, but it's interesting because it's, it's, it's a totally different way to train your body. It's really inclusive of the entire uh, system. And so I think that there's, there's validity in it, but um, you know, in terms of kind of contrasting that with lifting weights, we're so robotic and, uh, you know, focused on either single joints or just, you know, sagittal plane type um, uh, exercises that this totally uh, is a shock for people. So it takes a lot of practice. That's why I think it's phenomenal. I think this is, uh, so I, I haven't gone through the certification. I've practiced some of the movements uh, that you'll find in like animal flow uh, use, it was towards the end of my training career, so I haven't used it a lot with clients. But I tell you what, I, this is something that I could see myself like getting into, like, you know, I went on a mobility kick. I've gone on a bodybuilding kick. I've gone on a strength, you know, kick for a while. Like I'll go on these kicks where like I'm just going to focus on something and get really good at it. I think there's would be tremendous benefit to somebody like saying, I'm just going to get good at this animal flow. Uh, I think that it, one, you're going to, you're going to get some muscle from it. Obviously, if your goal is to build maximal muscle, it's not the most optimal way for you. Obviously bodybuilding type of routine, strength routine is going to get, build more muscle, but you will get some, some muscle from it. You're going to get some, but more than anything else, you're going to work on your, your movement. And like you, Justin, you were alluding to, it was like your entire body working together and then moving in all these different planes. So your your joint mobility and health, I think, would be phenomenal from going through yeah, this. Yeah, just familiarizing your yourself with uh, being placed in a position that you wouldn't normally find yourself in throughout the day. So uh, to be able to work your way out of that with strength, I think that's really interesting. And I think a lot of people could benefit from that uh, because most injuries are going to occur when your body's in a position you're not familiar with. And, mm -hmm. and, and then now what happens is you try to gain stability really hard in one direction while your body might be turning or moving in another direction. And then boom, you're, you're caught off guard. Well, it reminds me of the feeling that I have right now from the wake talking about wakeboarding. I mean, my body was, was contorted in, in a way that it hadn't been contorted in a very long time. And I was reminded of that, like by how sore I am right now. And just by doing movements like that, uh, probably would have prevented the way I feel today had I been doing things like that. Yeah, the, I think it's important, though, we, we kind of uh, discern between the primal patterns and animal flow because yeah, they, they are, are different. different. Yeah. Primal patterns refers to movement patterns that we consider to be fundamental to humans, the yeah. human animals. Walking, so squatting. squatting. So there's squatting, lunging, there's bending or hip hinging, mm -hmm. uh, twisting, which would be like throwing, for example, th that's which is a fundamental mu movement, mm -hmm. pulling, pushing, pulling, pushing, crawling, and then gait, uh, walking, jogging, or sprinting. I'm a huge proponent of primal pattern movements. In fact, the most effective exercises with weights that you could do from a muscle building, fat burning, body sculpting perspective. They don't have crawling? No, not on the primal uh, no, that's patterns. A, that's no. interesting. Um, tend to be around these primal patterns, right? If you think of all the most effective exercises that we talk about, they're either squatting, lunging, bending, twisting, pulling, pushing, or have to do with gait, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that. Then when it comes to animal flow, 
Uh, that's a little bit different. Animal flow is more um, break cr- dancing moves. <laughs> no, the, that's the easy way to describe it. Well, animal flow is more stuff uh, that's quadruped on hands and knees, uh, crawling, gorilla, yeah. bear, that kind of stuff. And I think that what they try to do is hark back to before maybe we became, you know, two legged. Well, you're in, you're emulating a lot of animals that aren't upright, uh, and so you're trying to kind of move where you're getting like scapular involvement uh, with your walking, with your hands, and your bending, and your you know being able to stabilize your body in that in that uh, position. Yeah. So if I was to give like to rate both of them, I'd say primal movement patterns uh, I f- believe to be m- much more valuable. But that doesn't mean that animal flow movements don't have a lot of value because getting on the floor, moving with hands and knees, doing these kinds of movements is going to work on mobility just naturally because you're on the floor, you're twisting, you're turning, you're using your hands and knees. It is going to work on wrist mobility, shoulder mobility, hip mobility, spinal mobility. It's going to help you get your body to communicate with itself differently. Um, Just by practicing those movements, you're going to get better at moving uh, overall. So I think they both have a lot of value but if I had to pick one to focus on, the primal movement patterns just have a longer well, history think, and I evidence. Think the, I think primal movement is mandatory. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a mandatory one. And then animal, it's foundational. Yeah, and then, then animal flow to me is a, is a, would be a cool, fun focus, right? It's mm-hmm. like if you wanted to get into something that's unique and different that would have all kinds of these benefits that maybe you weren't aware of. Like yeah, somebody who, who, who deals with like chronic joint pain and tight and all the time, like Going in, practicing animal flow, and maybe less well, focused on building a bunch of maximal muscle inside mm-hmm. the gym and doing that instead, I, I w- you would see tremendous benefit from that. I look at it, too, as like it's a progression of like challenging your mobility after you've established that you're stable. Right? Yes. So it's like, now I want to be able to actually work on strengthening it even more without just using it as maintenance. Like I want to challenge it. Uh, and I look at it the same way with like mace bells and Indian clubs and things like that that are unconventional, but it provides this fluidity of movement that's loaded. And so you're using like loaded because you're using gravitational forces being in this quadruped position so it's really challenging it's hard and it's interesting that way next question is from jackie martinez 1983 hey jackie (laughs) what does it take to always be on on and she put that in quotation i think she means feeling like Like you're your best on yeah like you're on fire you know here's the key with that i i spent a lot of you know my 20s i would say and maybe even some of my 30s trying to figure out how to always be on. Um, but then I started to realize that the key really is to figure out how to perform when you're not on. Um, you know, being on means being healthy, taking care of yourself, you know, getting good sleep. But even if you do all of that, you're not going to be on all the time. You're not going to mm. feel like you're on fire and motivated all the time. You can't. That's it. It's impossible. It's a, it's a feeling that you have and it waxes and wanes. And the most successful people, and I don't care what category uh, you pick, are the ones that are disciplined and can stay consistent when they're not on. Because when you're on, yeah. it's not you're going to be consistent. You're going to work out. When you're feeling motivated, I've never had to convince a motivated client to eat better. They're doing it on their own. It's when they're not feeling that way, that's when the real work comes into play. So I think it's really about practicing and learning how to continue to do the right things to continue to work hard, to continue to take care of yourself, be an honest person, do all the stuff that you know is good when you don't feel like it. I think that's the key. I feel like there's two different personalities with this. I feel like there's people that can are always driven to turn it on. You know, whatever state they're in, they always have to turn it on. And they they have a really hard, hard time learning how to turn it off. And being able to uh, decompress and be able to, you know, recover and rejuvenate and all that stuff sounds like a dirty word. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the opposite of that, where it's like, you know, I just want to stay comfortable. I want to I don't like change. I don't want to do all this. Stuff. I just want to be chill. And, and, and then they really need to turn it on. Mm-hmm. And that's a hard thing for them to do. And a lot of my clients that I, I had, I it, a lot of it really like revolved around being able to turn that off and to be able to really focus in inward and be able to, you know, learn how to meditate and learn how to, you know, proper recover. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I would just look at case by case, like who kind of falls a little bit more on uh, both sides of the spectrum. Well, I'm, I'm with you, Justin. Uh, I, first of all, I don't, I don't think it's uh, advantageous to be on all the time. 
But I, I do think this is what separates champions and everybody else. Yeah. I think when you have the ability to switch on uh, at command, regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of, uh, you know, the rough childhood or the rough stuff going on with your relationship or the hardship that you have at work, if you have the ability to shut those things off and turn on, uh, on command is what I think separates the people that from good to great. Um, and that me and they, that, that plays into sports that plays into your business life that plays into your relationship can you turn it on uh when when it matters when it's tough when it's hard when you're tired and fatigued when there's lots of drama in your life can you show up Mm -hmm. and switch on and be the best version you at that thing that you're doing does that mean that your health may be suffering does that mean that there's other things that are are troubling in your life like no that's that's life Mm -hmm. everybody has that we all have hardships we all have struggles we have hurdles are, do you have the ability, despite all those things that are going on in your life, to turn it on and be the best version of you at that moment at whatever it is you're doing? And that could be your craft. It could be your job. It could be a sport. And this, to me, is what really separates the, those that are great. Those that are great have this ability to know that all this shit is going on in, in my life. And, and here's the thing is a lot of times those that are really great, when it's most chaotic – they hone in even more on whatever it is they're focusing on. So mm-hmm. they use that fuel of like all this other chaos and shit and stress and everything going on in my life. Like they get even more tunnel vision on whatever it is they're doing, whether that be their job, whether it be their sport or their craft. They just go all in on it and they turn on completely. So. Yeah, yeah. It brings me back to Stephen Kotler, Jamie Wheel. Like a, they're talking about <laughs> flow. flow state and. Um, and, and you see that with like your top performers, like how they can like weave in and out of that and, and, and gain a flow state and have access to it. And a lot of it is just being present. And I think that uh, a lot of times when um, when I'm not on, I'm, I'm thinking too much in the future. And I'm and I'm and I'm trying to anticipate, and I work on this a lot actually. Uh, with as of late, the, over the last year or so, of learning how to stop analyzing, stop like thinking like ten steps ahead, and just come out with it. And, and, and it always comes out better when when you're present. And so being on is is most closely associated for me with being present. Yeah, and here's the other thing too is I remember you used to tell this to my salespeople: uh, motion creates emotion. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're talking about how to get your body and yourself to to all of a sudden turn on. Part of that, I mean, a lot of that's discipline. Like, there's many times I'll use exercise as an example, just because it's a simple, silly one. But there's many times when I don't feel like working out, the discipline gets me up and gets me going. Twenty minutes into it, now I'm on and I'm having a great workout. Or I don't want to do this thing for the business. I need to write this thing and I really don't feel like it, but the discipline gets me going. And then that's what turns that switch on. So a lot of it has to do with discipline and doing it anyway. You know, that's, a, that's what I mean by discipline is you do it anyway. And oftentimes doing it anyway is what gets that feeling of being on. And the more you practice that, the more you know and the more confident you become in the fact that you can do it anyway. No matter how I feel or how scared I am or how tired I am, I've done things anyway so many times in the past. I have no fear that, I'll, that I, I won't do that. I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. Even if I don't feel good, I'm still going to do it. And then that feeling alone sometimes, oftentimes, mm. makes you feel like you're on. Viagra also helps. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Pride Movement Fitness. Why did you guys partner up versus going solo? How did you balance the ego of I'm bringing this much to the business, but they're only bringing this much? Oh, that that last yeah. sentence right there is the the death nail in any successful group, whether you look at music or business. That whole attitude of uh, almost six years, and that's never been said in this business. Never, and yeah. you yeah. know what? And I'll tell you what: there are definitely moments when, in, in times in what we do, where where one person's doing a lot more than the other, or bringing more value. Mm-hmm. Nobody says it. Nobody. If anything, I'll acknowledge the other person is. I, I I'll never try to do that for myself because I know that that's the death nail for any successful team. You know what? It's really this. It's it's realizing that however good and awesome you are, you're not the best at everything. Mm-hmm. So surrounding yourself with people who are better than you at other things. I, when I was younger, that was a hard thing for me to, uh, to see because I f- it felt like a weakness in myself. Like, oh, that person's better than me at this. And, you know, it was like a hard ego check. As I got older, I loved it. Now I'm like, oh, that person's better than me at this. I'm so glad I'm working with them mm-hmm. so that that person can bring that thing 
to the table. There's no way that uh, – I'm just speaking for myself. There's no way that I, that I would be able to do anywhere near what we're able to do without working with the team that I work with because they bring things to the table that I either can't or don't want to. Um, and that's just the reality. It's a fact of life. Yeah, it's humbling. I mean, it's it's one of those things that um, you look at strengths and – you look at uh, your own strengths, your own weaknesses, but uh, obviously if you can see around you and you see greatness, like you want to associate yourself with, with people around you that, you know, will elevate you. And so to be able to uh, maintain that is definitely tricky. Uh, and it's something that uh, you want to always think that you're doing your best and putting your best foot forward. And again, like it, it moves around, it moves around with people's strengths. And so you have to be able to kind of feed uh, them in any way possible that you can and it, it's definitely one of those things that's it's an ego thing that you got to check on yourself and, and know, uh, you know, that uh, we're all putting in effort. We all want to win. And this all comes from being part of a team and thinking of it more of a team instead of a, an individual. And this is I was just grateful that I grew up uh, in all the sports uh, that I played mm -hmm. because it really taught me a lot of those lessons with with, you know, great players and, and, and great coaches and people that. Uh, had roles that, that they were they were killing and I know I could lean on them for certain roles that they were going to fulfill uh, and, and when there wasn't that how shitty we were as a collective unit and so it's it's allowing it's allowing them to shine it's allowing each person to shine in in, in their strengths and to just pass the ball you know pass the ball shoot when you be ready to shoot but you got to pass the ball I, I think that there's uh, you know there was either a lot of luck or serendipity or god whichever one of the three that you know fits your narrative better it was ayahuasca yeah, or the, yeah. <laughs> or that. i think that i think that played a big role and the reason why i say that is that it to get four uh alpha men in the room that are all very confident individually and have had success on their own to think that we're all just going to fall in suit together it maybe was even a little bit of uh, uh, us being naive um, but worked out. It really did. And I think part of why it worked out is uh, somewhat where we were in our life. You know, everybody's in their late 30s, uh, some older. You have uh, myself. I had already partnered with Justin. So Justin and I had a relationship that goes back um, well before Mind Pump. And so we'd work together. So I knew that his skill sets complemented mine really well. Uh, we were very different, um, but we also had that sport background that he's alluding to where, you know, winning is more important than either of us individually. We, we already had that. We'd already been to war together in business. So I already felt confident with that. I feel like Sal and Doug had a very similar relationship. They, you know, they first had built a relationship as client and trainer. And many times when you meet someone very unique and special like that, you build a bond and a relationship. They had built that already. They were already starting to do business together. So they had this mutual respect and also, I think Sal and Doug saw that in each other. The same thing that Justin and I saw, they complemented each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses. And so they had built that and forged. And then the fact that when we all got together, it really was just like, you know, there's a lot of, even though we're all very different, there's a lot of Sal and I have a lot of similarities. And I think uh, Doug and Justin have a lot of similarities. It, and it's like, but yet different enough that Justin comp comp uh, compliments even more of Doug and Sal compliments even more of me or however you want to look at it. And so then the four of us joining together made this perfect marriage for a business. And I think it also mattered that we all wanted to build something really big. Like none of us were in it for like a dollar amount. Like, oh, I want to make this much money and I'll be happy because it, it, we could have done something similar, even though n nothing like Mind Pump would have ever happen. But we all could have been very successful building some sort of a social platform, doing digital programs, selling it online, creating a presence for yourself, and all had individual successful business. But there's no way we would have been able to scale to where we are now and where we're going uh, without all of us together. And I think everybody kind of wanted that going in everybody wanted to build something really special and big we wanted yeah. to change things yeah it's so and because we all had this this crazy vision um it worked and all of us none of, no one wanted to be the man like nobody cared and like i knew that's when i knew we were going to be really successful early very early on when no one wanted the limelight no one said they wanted to be this leader person or like i'm the one who's in charge then you follow me or 
you know, wanting to be on all in the programs or wanting to be on the YouTube channel or wanting to be the face of the brand. Like nobody wanted any of that. Like everybody was like, nah, I don't want it. Like, let's let's give it to somebody else or let's promote somebody else or let's put somebody else out there. And when you have four people like that want to win that bad and are that selfless going into it and then that much experience, I mean, you get something like this. So I think it's very special. And I don't know if I could have done figured out, you know, three other people that I could have done this with. And so, you know, I don't know, call it luck, call it serendipity, call it whatever you want to call it. Um, but there's definitely a lot of that. And I don't I don't see a lot of, you know, four partnerships getting together to build a business. Uh, and working that off. No, I, I would yeah. say that the first step is finding the right people to work with. Um, but the next step, because let's say you do that, which is hard, by the way. I mean, finding the right people to work with and partner with, that's a tough uh, thats a tough obstacle to overcome. But once you do, then that means you're going to be successful, right? Oh, I got the right people. We're all working together. We're all going to crush. Now comes the bigger obstacle. That's the egos. The egos kick in. You see this again. And, in music, in business, in sports, you get the right people working together, then they start to do well, and then the real challenge kicks in. Now it's one of one person feeling like they're the one they're the, the, you know that's doing everything or they're the the star of the show, and it destroys uh, amazing things. And so uh, you know we, we did that first part. We, we found each other, worked together. Second part, uh, I think we're doing pretty good too, is, uh, is, is checking those egos. But it's a constant thing. It's a constant thing, and it's really showing the other people that you value them rather than showing them how valu valuable you are. I, I think that's uh, kind of a better way to put it. Well, yeah. to that point, we, I mean, with, as the business grew, right, so we made like no money the first year. Second year started to make a little bit of money. Third year is when it really started to turn and crank. You know, there's there was a, a an, that and that was the first time this what you're saying right now, I think, was really challenged. And I, I, I don't feel like it was a challenging decision. It was a very quick, easy decision for all of us because I think our heads were already there, which is, you know, it would have been very easy to to line our own pockets as the business started to scale early on. But we reinvested in people. You know, we knew that this, again, was much greater and bigger than us. And that if we were going to build this thing that's going to be around for a very long time and it's going to supply jobs for many people and, and do these great things, it, it can't just be about us. And even and that's a very tempting moment, probably. And I, 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 if I was 25 and in that same position and I saw the, the amount of money that was coming in the account and knowing that quarter that is mine, mm -hmm. if I want it, like that's that would Bentley right there. Yeah, right. That would, that would have been a very challenging situation to be in in my early 20s where we we're all at. Like there was no doubt. I mean, we were very, very cautious with that. And then when we get to, got to a point where we felt comfortable that we can invest it instead of investing it in ourselves and paying ourselves more money, we said, let's go out and find other people that we can build this thing with that we think that will add value to this team. And so, and we've continued to do that. And so, you know, and you, you don't see us like a lot of these uh, Instagram influencers, you know, driving around the Bentley and doing shit like that. That's flashy. And look at me because you know, it was never about us. It was always about building something that was greater than us. And I think that that was never a conversation. Not, not one of us, you know, spoke up and said, hey, I would like to take a bigger salary or, hey, I'd like some more of my money. Everybody was always about, know, right? you know, putting it back into the business and then into people. And it's never been different. Let's take my Lambo back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram, including the host, Doug. You can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.